Welcome, modern day mystics, fellow truth seekers, James and Justin, back again with another reaction video. And in this one, we're going to take a look at uh, I Am Beggar YouTube channel and their video, Do God and Science Contradict Each Other? This seems to be a theme within spirituality, trying to like reconcile science with spirituality. Yeah. Um, doesn't seem to go away. This is actually kind of an older video. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. For some reason, we got this idea in our head that it has to be either God or science. On one side, we say, well, everything we've learned in science kind of disproves and explains away God, so we don't really need God anymore. On the other side, we say, well, I really believe in God, so I'm just going to kind of ignore everything we've learned in science over the past 500 years because, well, science is probably just wrong. But I don't think the problem is whether it's just this one or that one. It's that we think it has to be just one or the other. When think about it, even if you were a non-physical super intellect and you wanted to bring a physical universe into existence, first, you'd need the stuff to make it out of. Second, you'd have to come up with how all that stuff was going to come together to form things. And third, you'd probably do it in a way that's organized and makes sense. Or in other words, you'd have to come up with science. So then it wouldn't be about, is it just this one or that one? It's about other signs of intent and rationality, order, mind, in the science. Or not. You decide. Now a few disclaimers here. I'm Catholic, so I don't speak for any other denominations. And I'm no scientist, so I'm just going to mention a few things and then I'll post them back up below from real scientists. You can check it out if you want. Now I know what some of you might be thinking, so just in case, let me start by clearing a few things up. We believe the world is round, it revolves around the sun, the earth is billions of years old, it wasn't created in seven days, the Bible is not a scientific textbook, and... Now take a deep breath here. We're okay with evolution and Big Bang. To an extent, oh. which I'll explain later. And one more thing. My intent is not to try to prove the existence of God to you or to myself. It's not a scientific question. But only to show that science could never be an impediment to God. Just as science could never be an impediment to truth. The existence of our entire universe, and everything in it, comes down to about 30 numbers. Physicists call these the physical constants. Now these numbers, as I understand them, are fixed values of a fundamental physical condition we find in our universe. For example, the force of gravity or the expansion rate of the universe, right down to the subatomic, such as the mass of a proton or electromagnetic force. Now here's the amazing part. Each one of these numbers are so perfectly precise and so balanced with one another that if any one of them were off, plus or minus the slimmest fraction, in some cases literally this much, there would be no life and no universe as we know it. That's pretty crazy. For example. I love it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, when, he, when, he was, when he said, like, uh, you know, Christians are okay with certain things, that is definitely up for debate because I know some Christians who would advocate for a seven-day, you know, creation cycle sure. that the universe is only six to eight. So it's mixed. It's a right. uh, a, a mixed pool out of, out of there of people who believe certain things. So, I, you know. We're hearing Absolutely. a pretty open-minded Catholic perspective here, from what I'm gathering. Certainly, certainly, it's it's interesting when he's one of the things he mentioned they don't believe is that the that it was in seven days that it was created. Yeah, because right? yeah. there's plenty of people that do think that. But I spoke to somebody pretty covert, you know, person with a lot of wisdom recently, and they pointed something out that I thought was genius because it had to do with this notion that first of all, I'll lay something heavy on you. The past isn't real. Neither is the future. Yeah. So not real. Completely illusion. 
And whatever the future is, is will occur here. It's only ever the present. It's only ever been the present. Everything occurs within the present. It's the only real thing, right? Yeah. This is frustrating to a logical mind, you know. But the point of what I'm saying is he said, what if you look at the scripture as if it's all happening now, you know? Yeah. All seven days, including the day of rest. It's reflective. And what if you look at it as if it's transpiring and happening now? Yeah. You know? And it gives a different effect and i've tried to do that with a lot of the scriptures a lot of different religions we have now what if this is speaking to me now what yeah. if it's a it's the most holy most real most relevant right now you know yeah. um it's not an invitation to neglect your future it's not an yeah. in, in, like an invitation to go crazy but i'm saying a lot of these things you have to be sort of flexible you, if you go in with a rigid scientific approach, yeah, you may miss out on some deeper lessons. You know? Yeah. Now we're getting into the you know deeper issues of spirituality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, Try yeah. to help me out here because I I feel like I'm having a hard time. No, I hear what you're saying. Uh, th yeah, there there's something about the the present moment and the past being gone, and I find the older I get and the distant the more distant I get away from past events. You know, there's more of a disconnect and you wonder yourself, like, given enough too much time, would it be it would it have happened at all? And you and that's kind of where I I was thinking about in this video where he was talking about something just slightly being off and then nothing, there's no life, there's no nothing. But given an infinite amount of times, would it not be probable that in some cases all the building blocks for everything to happen would happen and this is coming from someone who's trying to play a little bit of a devil's advocate here while at the same time being someone who actually like i do think there's something going on here that i do believe in some type of uh divine godness out there right um but i'm just pointing out that given enough time would it allow for the opportunity for the things that he's talking about to take place an infinite amount of time it's so hard to even get our heads around um and with such time it wouldn't just happen in our solar system. It might happen like an infinite amount of times out in the cosmos, which is looks, I suspect, is now infinite. Right. Infinite, infinite parallel realities, yeah. all kinds of different things. Right. Yeah. But what role does what role does mind play here? You know what I mean? I was yeah. thinking about the part of the Bible the other day where Jesus turns water into wine. And I was thinking of the power of the, of the mind, like. You can become ideologically possessed with scientism. You yeah. can be like, like deny all kinds of things that maybe science can't even necessarily address. Yeah. And the same thing, you can become religiously dogmatically possessed so that you're like denying, what are you talking about? You're denying yeah. science? I think there's a matter of how open you are, how elastic your psyche is, you know, which sounds like hokum most of the time. And yeah. it probably is hokum most of the time. But I'm saying, what if... You were so in tune with how the mind works because, you know, we know that the mind can do some dramatic things. Like if you if you're certain of something being the fact, your mind will restructure reality so that it plays out that way. So that it really seems like, you know, all the evidence leads to this notion that might be based on a false premise to begin with. Yeah. So I'm saying if you were if you had such mastery of your mind, you might be able to like hypnotism is a real thing. So you might be able to pick up a glass of water and be like, you know, to me, this might as well be wine. It has all the all the aspects of it. Yeah. It's a pushing the boundaries of open mindedness that I'm going for here. Yeah. It's probably too, too crazy for this video. So I'll, I'll dial it back. But I think so. you can either confine yourself or set yourself free based on your own mind. You yeah. can restrict yourself to a box. You know, I know people that are awfully certain of horrible things, and mm -hmm. then horrible things tend to play out. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean horrible things can't invade your life, even if yeah. you've got the most optimally positive mind. Yeah. But I'm saying if you are naturally a pessimist, and you're pessimistic, and you don't do anything to resist that, yeah. meaning anytime something bad happens, you don't go, wait a sec, wait a sec. Is this as bad as I think it is? Is there another way to look at this? If you don't practice that, you can be possessed by pess pessimistic notions yeah, and ideas no, and 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 put yourself into a box yeah so it's just i'm advocating for open-mindedness yeah and i think from what we're seeing here is he's trying to bridge a gap between science and faith 
Sky's the uh, limit. Sky's yeah. the limit once you st- start being open-minded. And yeah. then, you know, I guess be careful. Yeah. I don't know. All right, well, we'll let the rest of this play out, and then we'll uh, close it out at the end. If the gravitational constant were just a hair bigger or smaller, the stars of the early universe would be too hot or too cool to produce any life-essential elements. If the electromagnetic force were just a hair stronger or weaker, Atoms can form into molecules, and the entire universe would be a giant cloud of subatomic particles. If the mass of a tiny little proton was just a tiny bit bigger, there'd be no hydrogen, which means no hydrogen stars, which means no carbon and oxygen made in those stars, which basically means no water and no biology. So it appears, to most physicists, not to all, that since the very beginning, the entire universe has been perfectly tuned for one thing. Now physicists admit they have no idea how these numbers came to be so perfectly and they all agree it would be unreasonable to think (laughs) that it all just happened by chance. So according to, there are only two possible explanations. Either these numbers were set by a super intellect or they occurred naturally in one universe amidst trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of other universes that we could never possibly know exist. Now there's not a shred of scientific evidence to support either of these. So both require a giant It takes about 2 billion lines of unique handwritten code by over 25,000 engineers and a vast empire of computers and data centers spread throughout the entire globe to run Google. It takes over 3 billion letters of unique genetic code arranged in a precise, specific manner written inside a cell weighing less than a few thousand millionths of a gram to run you, a far more complex and superior system than all of Google. Now imagine looking at all that Google code and then me telling you it all just kind of evolved together on its own somehow. Now, as I said, as Catholics, we're okay with evolution, just as long as we're talking about the development of our physical bodies. And it makes perfect sense to me that the God of the universe would choose to develop our bodies out of the very environment which we are to live, survive, and flourish in. Actually, the Bible kind of says so. But evolution has no answers when it comes to the origins of life or why we, out of every species on Earth, at some point went from this to thinking, speaking, writing, art-making, imagining, loving, reflecting, self-aware, reasonable creatures. Or in other words, so what makes more sense? That life and intelligence and the ability to think and love comes from something that already has life and intelligence and thinks and loves? Or that it comes from this? In Big Bang, well, it was a Catholic priest who came up with the idea, so we're okay with it. And most physicists agree that there had to be a beginning to the universe, even if you believe in the multiverse theory. So the million dollar question is, how did we go from this to this? All matters originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds the most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Max Planck. I'm sort of adverse to, to questions posed like, you know, a bunch, of pres- a bunch of information presented and then be like, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> You know, because yeah. I, if you're going to be play the open minded game, you got to be like, no, yeah, it could have literally come from nothing. And science is the best ex- other than science. There is no explanation. Yeah, I would agree that that's possible, too. 
I'm almost know, curious. Do most people believe that their the universe began at a time? I, yeah, for some reason, I don't think there was a beginning. I think it's just always it's been. It's big banging right now. Yeah. It's well, ever refreshing moment by moment in real time. Yeah. Possibly. Like maybe there was a start to the galaxy or the solar system or something like that. But I think that there's always been everything. Right. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like sometimes I don't like being pigeon held into yeah. like, I you know. You. Ipso facto, yeah. God. I'm like, anything, you know, any, first of all, all your logic and all your explanations, and I'm, this is not criticizing this person. That video is well done. I'm saying all anybody's logic and all anybody's conclusions are couched within reality, the outside of which there can be no, you can't like construct a religion from inside it and be like, and that explains the dome of reality we're in. It's not even a dome. Yeah. You know, you, you don't, science might even say it is dome-like. I'm saying it gets to a point where there are no more answers. These things are couched within reality. They, they're, they're bifurcations and, yeah. and fragments that allow us to be able to like me say something at you, it go into your ear and you understand me. Yeah. They're couched within it. So when you're going to talk about the thing that's beyond, I don't think that there's any hard and fast conclusions that you can arrive at. The best way to probably talk about the most profound and awesome and, you know, metaphysical things would be like maybe poetry. Yeah. You know, like maybe you could poetically sort of point at it or describe it. Yeah. It feels like everything, like a lot of these arguments sometimes are like to try and get like a, a, a like get on a plateau or get into a place of position of authority to be like, and this is how it is. And so, this will, so this will be how we run things now. Mm -hmm. Why can't we just appreciate it for what is me like? That's freaking amazing. That's wild. Which is an appreciation in real time for even opposing yeah. uh, opinions to me. To me, it's pretty advanced when you get to the point where you start to like loosen up your need to like get and demonize and hate. And instead you look around and you consider some of the things Jesus said, like, love your enemy. Pray for those that, you know, use you. Yeah. That is subversive talk. Yeah. You know, that is not what most people do. I harp on that a lot. I don't know why I get so passionate about it. It's more like, eh, in, whatever. It's tickety-boo. Yeah. You know, if, the, if everything is hanging on by one micro thing differently, then who the heck am I to fret? But yeah. unless the Bible literally says, get your fret on, you know, and then maybe I'll reconsider it. Maybe I had a fret a little, but, I'm, but it has tons of verses that are like, don't even worry about tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Like the video. Uh, guys, if you liked our reaction here, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share us with a friend and everyone until next time. Stay, Stay spiritual. spiritual.